Hello, today we're going to continue with the MSK radiology sign series and we're going to talk about the sale and posterior fat pad signs. These are very common signs that we learn in medical school and they represent displacement of the fat that normally lives at the coronoid fossa at the anterior distal humerus and the olecranon fossa at the posterior distal humerus. They normally live within this fossa but they get displaced when we have distension of the capsule either by a large effusion, a synovitis or a hemarthrosis. In the anterior elbow joint, when we get displacement of this fat pad, it actually ends up looking like a sail of a boat, and that's why it's called a sail sign. Normally, we can see this fat pad in a patient that has no significant effusion, so you have to keep in mind that it is only abnormal when it is displaced and looks like a sail, as in this case. On the other hand, the posterior fat pad, whenever we see it, is abnormal. Uh, the reason for that is that we have the triceps tendon running just posterior to the olecranon fossa, so to get displacement of this fat pad, we really have to have a sizable effusion. When we see it, it's abnormal. The concept of the displaced fat pad is actually very simple. Here is an illustration to better explain it. The blue and red semicircles are the normal fat that usually lives within the coronoid and olecranon fossa respectively. Normally, this fat gets displaced by the flexion and extension on the elbow. When we have full flexion of the elbow joint, the coronoid process will go into the coronoid fossa and will displace that fat. Conversely, when we have full extension of the elbow joint, the olecranon will have to accommodate within the olecranon fossa and that fat within the fossa will get displaced. However, when we have big effusions of the elbow joints, which are depicted by these green structures here, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it has nowhere else to go but into the olecranon and coronoid fossa. This sale and posterior fat pad signs are very important in trauma as they suggest a large hemarthrosis and when we see it is suggestion of a supracondylar distal humeral fracture in the pediatric population and a radial head fracture in the adult population. Now you know.